That was awesome. Every day you can praise Jesus too. Amen? That's good. Grab your Bibles with me this morning. Go to Ephesians chapter number five. Ephesians chapter number five. I love watching them sing, amen? I need to start off this morning, and I need to say I'm sorry. I need to ask forgiveness because it has been so hectic, and I've been so scatterbrained, and we did not properly memorialize our veterans last week. And I need to say I'm sorry about that. Because I had no intention of doing that. Okay? But uh, I ask for your forgiveness. Uh, Ephesians 5, though. Ephesians 5. We're going to read verse 22 down through Ephesians 6, verse number 4. All right, Ephesians 5, uh, look with me, 22. It says, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hateth his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church." For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. Chapter 6, verse 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Let's pray, and we'll get into this this morning. Lord, we're so grateful to be here. Lord, I'm glad that, as that song said, I can praise you every day. Lord, I just pray that you fill me with your spirit this morning. Lord, I pray that you meet with us. Lord, we need you here. Lord, I just pray that whatever is said be just what we need as we continue our, our series on relationships. Lord, I pray you guide my thoughts. Lord, keep the distractions at the door this morning. Speak to hearts. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, it's interesting. Um, when you think of a Christian home, what comes to mind? Right? We, we've gone to, kind of started this relationship series and we've gone over just the basics. You know, God desires relationships for us. And uh, as a uh, person, we should understand who we are as a single individual in Christ. We looked at marriage a little bit last week and there's many more sermons that could be preached on marriage. But today we're kind of looking at this God-driven relationship of the home. I mean, what, what comes to mind when you think of Christian home? Right, a loving, faithful father who is stern and knows how to rule with compassion. A, a mother who is loving and sweet, but teaches her children to be amazing Christians. Kids who listen and obey the first time. Uh, I mean, where, where does this image of perfection come from, though? I mean, because that's what we assume. Well, I'm a Christian. This is how my family's supposed to be. Is this a biblical? Is this a biblical model of the Christian home? 
I mean, it's interesting to think about this, or, or is it just another impossible expectation that we put on ourselves and we put on our children and then we put them on their children and it all stems from our own failure, struggling, struggling to meet with our own expectations that were put on us by our grandparents and our parents. It's a cycle, right? It's all there. I mean, the, this is going to be a two-week lesson probably, but the next couple of weeks, we're just going to uh, pick apart this home, right? What, what, what it truly is, we're going to look at a, a couple things, but I understand this morning, uh, I was thinking about this as I was studying, our homes are being destroyed at a horrifying rate. I mean, constantly we are under attack and, and media uh, portrays the home as a joke, it's not important, really, right? Where you work, how you look, that's the important stuff, right? Dads are just stupid and clumsy and everything is their fault. That's what social media tells us. That's, that's what our entertainment says. Moms are just materialistic. They're controlling and they have to be in charge and they are constantly right. That's what we see on TV, right? right? The kids just happen to live in the same house as their parents, but they either do whatever they want to, right? Or they live under this uh, dictator uh, type rule, right? And how dare the parents tell their kids how to behave? That's what we are constantly intaking, right? And then don't forget all the other influence that, that have led to these stereotypes, right? Teachers in schools telling parents uh, what and how they should raise their kids, and grandparents just sit back and allow their kids and their ground, grandkids to just flop and gasp like fish out of water. Well, they'll figure it out. We had to. We got to be careful. Kids and grandkids don't respect the grandparents either. They only use them uh, as financial resources. So what's a Christian home? I mean, what is it? In a room this size, undoubtedly, we have a, uh, plenty of examples of what a home is, right? Uh, many different opinions, right? And, and there's so many uh, different ideas of what a home looks like, right? We, we get the image, we, we get the, the idea of a Christian home should be uh, like this. It should be a daddy and a mommy who gets saved when they're young and, and they are raised in church and they get married after dating each other, only each other. They start having kids right away. Mommy stays home and teaches Junior and Sally how to be the most obedient, yes ma'am, yes sirring angels around. Right? And what else? They're in church every time the doors are open. They never fight. Right? And we could go on and on about all the things of what a Christian home puts into our mind. But I tell you, the home is one of the most important relationships to God. I mean, it was established in the beginning. Right? For this cause, we just read in Ephesians, this is why a man will leave uh, his father and mother. They will cleave unto each other. They will uh, raise uh, their families Right, that, that, that's the purpose of this. Right, a Christian home, well, the kids in that Christian home, they gotta get saved at an early age. They gotta get married. They gotta go to church. They gotta do, and it's over and over. That's what a Christian home should be. But, I, but I'm wondering this morning, how, how many of us are, are Christians? How many of us are Christians? Uh, praise God, right? I'm a Christian. That's okay. Hey, amen, I'm a Christian. That's a good thing. How many of us have this home situation? I have a Christian home. Yeah. Right? It's an interesting idea. It's an interesting thought. Because we imagine a Christian home as this perfect thing. Right? But really what, what we're looking at this morning is, okay, maybe mom and dad split up when they were young. Maybe dad gets 50% of the time, the kids, and mom gets them 50% of the time. Hey, maybe grandma's living at home. Hey, maybe we're living in grandma's home. Hey, maybe we only had one kid and we didn't have multiple. Maybe, maybe the mom has to go to work every day. Hey, maybe, maybe we've adopted a, a relative because uh, mom and dad couldn't handle the pressures of it. There are so many different types of home scenarios, but we convince ourselves that this Christian home is what our home should look like. 
And then when they don't meet uh, uh, that expectations, well, we just justify how we live. Well, it's okay. There's no way we could ever reach that. But then when somebody falls into another type of sin, well, shame on them. Isn't it just as important for us to have a, a, a home established as it is for us to, we'll say, be in church? For us to read our Bibles. Hey, Adam and Eve, they were supposed to raise their children. Hey, uh, Old Testament, um, the Ten Commandments, right? Hey, this is children, you need to obey. Hey, this is established, what, before this book was? It's interesting, I'm just wondering, I mean, where do we measure up this morning in your home? I, I can almost guarantee you we all come from a different, strained, broken type of background. It just happens that way. Well, my parents are still married, brother. Then that's good. But were they always a strong Christian family? Well, what is that? It's an interesting thought. So let's look this morning, right? We're going to look at God-driven relationship of the home. Go with me back to Genesis chapter number two. Kind of where we started this series. Genesis chapter number two. Verse number 18, we can kind of see where the home begins. Genesis 2 verse 18, it says, and, let, and the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helpmeet for him. It's not good for the man to be alone. I am desiring of relationship for him. Jump down to verse 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked and the man and his wife and were not ashamed. Man, this is the prime picture. This is the establishment of the home structure, right? Uh, chapter number three, we get into uh, um, what God tells them. This is what I want you to do, you know, uh, till the earth, tend the garden, populate. Right, And he's starting this, uh, you should be one with your wife, one with your husband. This is an establishment of God and your children should see that. But if we're truly looking at what a Christian home is, we really have to begin at what a Christian home is not. What a Christian home is not. Hey, understand this. A Christian home is not perfect. We're supposed to be. How how dare you have a child who said no to you that one time? He won't eat the same meal as you are tonight? You mean you went to McDonald's for dinner? You didn't cook it? You didn't prepare it? Your wife has to... Hey, a Christian home is not a perfect thing. I I understand that this morning because I think a lot of uh, guilt is on families, especially younger families, because they're looking at uh, uh, what a Christian home in their mind should be. But that's not biblical. It's just not biblical. Romans 3 verse number 10 says, as is it written, there is none righteous. No, not one. What does that mean? Your home is not going to be perfect. That righteousness is right doing all the time. I mess up. I I, I dare say this morning, you mess up. Don't come at me later. Hey, we all mess up, don't we? So what does that mean? If I'm messing up, if my wife messes up sometimes, if our our son messes up sometimes, well, then we're going to have a perfect Christian home, aren't we? No, we're we're, going to strive to live the Christian life the way that we're intended to. Romans 3, 23 says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We're all just a bunch of sinners trying to get by, aren't we? My, my, my home is uh, just as much of a problem in my mind as it is in many of yours, I'm sure. I mean, it just happens that way. Hey, th- that couple's home is just as much of a mess as my f- home is a mess. 
Maybe there's different areas, maybe there's different uh, issues that we have, but where do we get this biblical idea that my home has to be perfect? Hey, Abraham had two wives and kids by both of them. And God even said, uh, Isaac, your only son, and he just kicked out Ishmael, right? Not Ishmael. All right, well, uh, anyway, think, think about the situations this morning, right? Jacob had two wives and children by both of them. He thought he was marrying the one, but then he ended up getting the, the older daughter. Now he had to go back and get the other one. That's a perfect Christian home. Hey, Boaz, he married a widow, and guess what? The ex-mother-in-law lived with him. Hey, hey, David, he married the lady that he had an affair with and a baby with her. Well, I guess we should get married now. These are people of God, right? Mary, the mother of Christ, she was a widow. She had multiple kids, right? And guess what? One of her son's disciples ended up living with her, not in a relation type of way, but a mother-son type of way. Hey, we can look at Mary, Martha, Lazarus. As far as I can see in biblical, they lived together, but they weren't in relationships at all. They were adults, weren't they? Man, there, there's, there's so many different scenarios, uh, scenarios that, that, that we can and look at in scripture. And I can say, I don't see this perfect family structure that everybody tries to guilt themselves into. This home situation that we think of is not perfect. But what we need to do is we need to see that, listen, I, I do come short. I, I don't uh, meet up with God's standard of perfection. I, I, I know I fail. I know I mess up. But in my home, I, I want to, as Joshua said, right? As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. What does that mean? I'm going to fail sometimes, just like Christ's apostles did, just like the, the men and women of the Old Testament did. Faithful men, as Hebrews 11 says. I mean, these are men who, who have been recorded throughout time itself as faithful men of God, uh, uh, friends of God even. Understand, your home does not have to be perfect to be a Christian home. You have to have Christ in it. You, you have to be following Christ. You know, one of the things that's really destroying the home I feel, me and my wife were just talking about this, happy wife, happy life. That, that's horrible. <laughs> I've said it so many times, right? Well, happy wife, happy life. So that means I don't get to be happy, right? My, my, my kids don't get to be happy. We always have to make mama happy, right? That, that's the rule. We came across this. It should say this, happy spouse, happy house. That, that's what it should be, honestly, because we should be working together. We should be striving together. Am I to love her? Yes. Is she to respect me? Yes. In a reverential, uh, God-honoring way. Yes, that's what we're supposed to do. And God points out those things through Paul's penmanship in Ephesians, right? Why? Because those are things that I as a man am going to struggle with and she as a woman is going to struggle with. Especially in today's society when Michelle Obama is trying to take man out of woman. I don't get it. Right? But it's happening and it is everywhere. God established the home in a special way. And we got to get out of our minds it has to be perfect. Adam and Eve were not perfect. Continue on. We're just sinners saved by grace. A Christian home is not worldly. A Christian home is not worldly. In John 15, verse number 19, it says this. It says, if ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world... But I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Why is the home being attacked so much? Because it was founded in God's image. It was designed by God. There are Christians trying to keep it uh, uh, holy and sanctified unto God. And because of that, the world's saying, uh-uh, we don't like it. We, we, we want your home to be like my home. I, I want you to have the same struggles, even though we as Christians, we do have home struggles. 
It's okay. I'm, I'm given the, the, the freedom to say my home messes up sometimes. <laughs> it happens. But listen, I, I, I'm not going to be in the world. I'm, I'm not going to be of the world. John 17, 16 down, it says, They are not of the world, even as I am of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. For their sakes I sanctify myself, and they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for, for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. That they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee. That they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou givest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. And he continues on, I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, that completeness. And that the world may know that thou hast sent me. And has loved them. And now has loved me. Hey, I understand. Christ is saying, listen, we are going to be in the world. He knows that. He, he's praying to God. To fight. He says, this is what is going to take place in their situations. But we need to get to a point where we're not acting like the world. We're to be set apart from the world. What, what does that mean? Every, all of these expectations that the schools, that these sports, that everything puts on our families, we need to be at some point. Are, is school bad? No. Are sports bad? No. Right? Is working bad? No. None of these things are bad, but when it overtakes our Christian responsibilities, that's when it becomes bad. Right? We, when, when our children come up and say, I want to dress exactly like everybody else dresses. And you say, I don't think that's really appropriate. And they say, I want to do it anyway. And you say, okay, that's an issue. We, when, when, we're, when we're allowing filth into our homes and we're saying, hey, guess what? We're going to watch whatever we want. And if the kids are around, it doesn't matter. That's an issue. Hey, we're, we're going to listen to everything under the sun. We're going to allow anything into our TV, into our monitors, into our screens, whatever it is. It doesn't matter. We become carnal, worldly. Man, when, when, when we're looking at uh, this God-driven relationship, right? The home, what it's supposed to be, it's not perfect, but it's not worldly either. Nobody's perfect except Jesus Christ, right? No one is uh, going to sit here this morning and say, well, I am. Pastor Dan, I don't mess up ever. We know you do, though. Hey, no, nobody's going to say that this morning, but we got to understand. We still need to be uh, at a point where we're saying, I'm not going to be of the world, though. I'm not going to be of the world. John 18, 36, just this first part of that verse says, Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. That, that's where we're supposed to be. We were supposed to understand this. If I am trying to rear my children in a God-fearing environment, then I need to be mindful of the environment I'm allowing them to be in. It's tricky business. That's not what a Christian home is. A Christian home is not an idol. It's not an idol. Right? So our homes get put before God so often. Right? I, I, anything set before God in turn is an idol, isn't it? If I'm allowing my wife to be in control of everything, all my thoughts, everything is consumed with my bride, she is now an idol to me. If I allow everything that my son is involved with, everything that he does to consume me wholly, he is now an idol to me. If I'm trying to please them, happy wife, happy life, and everything is revolving around how my family feels, they are now an idol to me. A, a Christian home is not an idol. It's not something to be placed before a loving, holy God. Mark chapter number 12, verse number 30, puts it this way. Mark 12, 30. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like 
Namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. These are the ones. So how do we establish our home? Not as an idol, we keep God first. Hey, I, I'm speaking to broken homes. I'm speaking to, to people with Christian uh, homes in their mind. I, I go to church. She goes to church. Our kids go to church. We're a Christian home. Hey, I'm talking to the ones who only come two times a year. I'm talking to the ones who are in a disarray, who are struggling, who are trying to just be something for God. We're going to mess up. It's okay. We're not perfect. We, we got to understand, we're, we're, we're not to be worldly though. That's, that's the setting apart. Hey, th- th- this goes as far as to speak to your own individuality, right? Speaking back to that singleness. Singleness, that relationship plays into every relationship. So what does that mean? When I'm, when I'm focusing on trying to be this perfect image to everybody else, man, when I'm at church, I make sure we all look very good. But then what? Then you go home and you're cussing at each other and you're watching whatever you want to. What is that? That's not how it works. But we, we got to be mindful. Exodus 20, verse number three. Right? We're in the Ten Commandments. Many of you could just quote them, right? Hey, thou shalt have no other gods before me. No other gods before me. You, you can't serve the one and love the other, right? They're, they're, they're enemies one with the other. Hey, he says, if, you, if you're in the world, if you love the world, you're an enmity status. You are an enemy of me, God says. The issue is, is that we have this image of what a Christian home is. Right? We have this picture. We, we all do. The minute I said Christian home, you all had this image of what it is. Right? Well, that family's in church. Well, they look good. Well, they're obedient. Well, they're, 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 just, they're just clean. Right? Their kid actually smells good this morning. Right? Hey, hey, all of this stuff, he doesn't have dirt on him. Hey, he actually still has his shirt tucked in and everything. Hey, we, we, we get this idea. And in our minds, we're, we're just uh, 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 telling ourselves Well, I could never be that. So then in turn, we're saying I could never have a Christian home. So then when my children fail me, eh, I just expected it. Then when my wife does something, well, I'm just going to yell at her anyway. Why? Because it's not a big deal. We're not a Christian home. We'll never be as good as them. Hey, maybe you're injured and you're like, I don't even have a, a, a home full of people. I'm not even married. Is your home a Christian home? Yeah. Do, do you understand that? What are you allowing into your own life? What, what are you bringing in? What have you put before God? What are, what are you uh, comfortable with that God says, ah, I don't think you should be doing that. But you've done it so long, it's not a big deal anymore. Man, I understand this morning, there are things that a Christian home is not, and there's such a long list. I mean, we we could go on and go on and go on, but this morning, I want us just to get our minds wrapped around these three. Perfection is not possible this side of heaven. It's okay. Aren't we supposed to bear one another's burdens? Well, if you're perfect, you don't have any. I mean, hey, uh, we're supposed to abstain from worldly activities, worldly behaviors, worldly thoughts, worldly intentions. We're, we're, we're not supposed to have these things. Where is it in your home, though? We got to be careful. We all fail. Hey, this, is, this, is pre- this whole series is for me. You just get to hear what I'm dealing with. Man, it's important for us to understand what are you putting before God and you're saying it's okay because I'm trying to establish a Christian home. Well, it's fine. I, I, I know that uh, God is important. I know that he wants me there in church. I, I know that I'm supposed to be doing things at home like reading my Bible and praying with my kids and, and I'm, I'm supposed to be having these relationships and talks and I'm supposed to be doing these things. But you know what? We're just not that type of Christian home. 
We're, we're not that type of uh, uh, family. We'll never be that type because we have our faults and I guess that's just how God made me, so it's okay. We're supposed to work towards sanctification, right? This process of becoming more Christ-like. That's getting rid of the things that we're holding on to. Man, Ephesians 5 Right where we started, e- Ephesians uh, 5, when it's talking about these, uh, uh, these things, right? Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church, gave himself for it. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. Hey, hey, th- these are important guidelines, that's where I think a home fails so often, right? Hey, as a Christian, we hear it week after week, we understand this is a guidebook, right? Everybody's heard the, the acronym, right? Basic instruction before leaving earth, Bible, right? This is our guidebook. It's the roadmap. It tells us what we need to do, but we all know we're not there yet. But then in Christian circles, when we talk about what your home life is like, everybody expects you to be there. Oh, especially with your kids. Hey, young, young couple, you're starting dating. Guess what? One of the first questions is going to be out of a, a senior member of the church. When are you getting married? Hey, young married couple who just got married. Guess what? The first question is going to be, when are you having kids? Why, why, why are those the things that we ask? Why aren't we saying, hey, how's your prayer life? Hey, how's your Bible reading? How's your relationship with God? Hey, there, there, there's a lot of things that a Christian home is not. There, 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 I mean, there's so many. Right? We, we can think of things. But they all fall, I believe, into these three categories. And we got on perfection is not attainable. Worldliness needs to be avoided. And we got to keep God first. We have to keep God first. Hey, I understand that. As a lost individual, there was a point when I understood, man, I fall short of the glory of God. That's where it began. That's where I began to establish a Christian home. That's where you need to be at the beginning, establishing your Christian home. If you're truly desirous of this relationship, a strong home unit, you have to start with, I'm lost. Right? I, I fall short of this. I'm not perfect. And that's the standard for heaven. Once we realize that, once I understand I am not perfect, I cannot enter heaven because that's the standard. Then I can look at that and I can say, okay, I am in need of a savior. Why? Because I am worldly. I am at enemy status with God. The way I am living, the things that I'm doing, the thoughts that I have, the things that I say, right? The, the way my heart is because uh, whatsoever a man is inside, right, comes out. Yeah. Hey, hey, I got to understand I'm not perfect. I am worldly. I have things before God in my life. We establish those things and then we can look to God. We can say, okay, I know I've messed up. I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I failed you, but Lord, please come into my life and save me, Right? I mean, that, that's the point of it all. What is the point of a home? So other people who don't have that strong relationship can look to your family and say, man, what a picture of God's love. That's what it's supposed to be. Well, we're supposed to love our spouses to the point when people see us, it resembles Christ's love for us. Uh-oh. <laughs> I failed. Right? Why? Because that's, that's the way it is. I mean, we are sinners saved by grace. We are sinners on the road to perfection. Right? We got to understand that. Hey, this morning, are you a, a perfect family? Are you a worldly family? Uh, 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 what's before God? What do you have before God? 
Right? We, we got we to gotta get these things situated now. Hey, I, I just started a marriage counseling with a couple and I said, listen, understand some things that she is not and he is not because y'all, you're not perfect. And they said, we're out of here. We quit. I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. No, but seriously, we have to get that mindset. I knew when I married Miss Megan that she was the perfect woman. No, I didn't. I knew she was getting the perfect man. <laughs> but she knew I wasn't because she knew I was getting the perfect woman. Hey, we, we got to get our minds wrapped around this. It's okay. Right? It's okay to fall short sometimes. But understand, if we are truly Christians, if we're Christians... That's where it starts. If you're a Christian, if you accepted Christ as your savior, if you have a, a home, right? And, and I'm going with single people, divorced people, right? Grandparent people, everybody. If you're a Christian, you have to understand we're going to, and we have to strive to be more Christ-like. That's what everything comes down to. Our faults, that's because we're not acting Christ-like. Hey, the, the, the places that we mess up, the arguments, the contention in our home, that's because we're not acting Christ-like. Christ is love. That's why those are the greatest commandments, he says. Love me, love each other. That's where it all starts. But it starts with salvation, understanding who we are in Christ, and then trying to live that out trying to live that out. Let's pray. Lord, as we just um, think about what a Christian home is not, I, I pray that we understand if we're truly Christians, we should be striving to be more like you. That means setting ourselves aside. That means loving you properly, loving others properly. Lord, I pray for that person in here this morning who may not know you as their personal Lord and Savior. They say, I've had nothing but disastrous relationships. My home is in turmoil. Maybe there's someone in here this morning who says, I, I, I know nothing but hate my life, my entire life. Lord, I pray that they just understand you love them. Lord, that you died for them. To offer them e eternity in heaven. That's where it begins. That's where the Christian home begins. Lord, I pray you be with this invitation now in Jesus' name. Amen.